All right, lab five, uh, purpose of this custom lab is to record, observe, and make sense of different uh, speed, velocity, acceleration values for an increasing Fibonacci spiral uh, as, with a constant speed in hopes of finding some uh, constant proven values. Uh, models, we have this analyze and tracker uh, over an overlain Fibonacci sequence uh, expansion. Uh, and then all the graphs that come with that, uh, we'll have a lot of those. Uh, why those? Well, obviously, getting this position, speed of velocity, uh, and all that. So, main physics ideas, a little bit less this time, just Newton's second law for position of velocity. Uh, goes deeper to acceleration, and then there's some other complicated uh, stuff we don't learn in this class uh, that I decided to include as well that just looks cool. Uh, why these principles? Well, once again, just has to do with the position and getting that over time. Uh, Re-preview, we'll find some cool patterns. Uh, in the graphs and find some repeating numbers and ratios, uh, but their meaning is a little bit more complicated and uh, arguable. So basically this is the Fibonacci spiral and how it goes. It starts here and it circles around adding the two previous numbers every time. Uh, and This is more or less a visual representation of it and it hits these corners every time uh, in, in this sort of pattern here. Experiment itself, system, just the tip of the line. Uh, surroundings it didn't really matter if there was surroundings or not because the line isn't being affected by anything. Uh, so it's it sort of applies, but not really. Initial conditions, you just have uh, origin at a, let's see, this position here. Here's your origin. Uh, and then initial velocity starts at zero. Speed is constant throughout, and the velocity acceleration only changes by result of the distance from the origin and, and how that affects uh, the change in position over time. Here's what it looked like in Tracker. Started here, started circling around, uh, followed up into this corner, and here's what it looks like when it's finished. There was a lot of iterations, uh, but I wanted a smooth graph of how this thing moved around. A whole lot of code, just really annoying. Um, here's the main thing that we wanted to look at, though. Um, graphs of position over time for X and Y. Uh, this is the main focus of what we're going to be talking about here we're going to be looking at the differences in the peak values of the X and the differences in the peak values of the Y and what that means. So you can see here, the first peak is at 2, the next peak 5, I mean this isn't 5, but the difference between the peaks is 5. Next peak difference is 13, next peak difference is 34. Now you might think, well that's weird, that's every other value in the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, minus the 1 here, the 3 here, and you know, yada yada yada. So now let's look at the Y. First peak, negative 1. That's a peak of 1 difference. Next goes to 2, which is 3 difference. Next is 8 difference. Next is 21 difference. Well, you might say, well, these are the missing values from the Fibonacci sequence up here. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 20, and 34. Uh, and I'll explain that a little bit. As for the velocity, uh, trying to make any sense of those was a little bit harder. Uh, peak differences in those went from 3 to 8 and then capped at 10. Same thing for the Y, oddly enough. Uh, it, it visually looked like the Fibonacci sequence numbers here, but I think quickly that was just coincidental. Uh, accelerations, you know, these are a little bit more convoluted. If I had a more perfect tracker placement, these would look clear, uh, but something might can be gained from looking at this uh, had it have been perfect placement. In terms of the angular velocity, you can see this goes down over time uh, as the line travels straighter and straighter. Uh, same thing with the acceleration. When it's not as compact, uh, your momentum, for example, is going to be closer uh, aligned to the line of how it's currently traveling. So what does this all mean? Uh, similarities in terms of physics, we gathered those differences, revealed some interesting values, uh, matching the Fibonacci sequence, and there are certainly other measurements found in those that can uh, prove other numbers related to the sequence like the golden ratio. Uh, differences, well, obviously, not really a real system in surrounding. Uh, there could be better observable models made. P possible source of error, uh, imperfection of tracker placement, uh, and that's just typically theoretical only. So what does this mean? Uh, it's not as complicated as you might think. Uh, those corners I was talking about earlier, those corners are negative y extrema, uh, plus x extrema, y extrema, and negative x extrema going around in a counterclockwise pattern. Applying that code to the linear sequence itself gives you 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 20, and 34. So it's a non-mathematical way of looking at the sequence increasing. Um, 
And that's sort of what it means for these uh, alternating things and the, all the graphs in general. Uh, basically, the velocity acceleration, as I've already explained, uh, it goes more drawn out over time uh, because you're taking much longer to uh, complete a spiral. Conclusion, successful. Uh, as I said, lots of ways to find these golden values and 